Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another uh, Q&A. Now this is going to be an email question and it's actually one I got a quite a while ago from a guy named Paul. Now, um, yeah, a little disclaimer here, still under the weather. It's not the mic, it's not the voiceover. I do just sound this bad at the moment and um, I'm coming out of my little bit of a sinus thing. As you guys know, uh, this time of year, the trees are making love and my sinuses and ears just go straight south and, and are like this for the next like month or so but either way that doesn't uh that doesn't stop the show we still got to make content so with that said i'm going to answer a question here from paul which is about um setting up a core quarantine tank using media from your tank and just kind of giving you guys some uh, ins and outs regarding that since it is a pretty common question that i get now uh yeah before we get started if you want to support the channel head over to fishofhex.com per usual and it is buy three get one free uh this month for 3d printing so uh, let's get started. It says, uh, I'm one of your subscribers on YouTube. Uh, thank you for all the stuff you do. I was uh, watching one of your recent videos about coral quarantine tank and about cycling it. You mentioned to use water from your established uh, tank if you have one. I don't, you <clears throat> I don't recall you mentioning about using established media um, in your coral quarantine tank to add corals right away. My question is, if I don't, uh, if I'm going to start a 20 to 29 gallon coral quarantine tank, if I grab some, uh, grab a piece of rock from my main display tank, which has been up for about 11 months, and put that in the coral quarantine tank, can I start adding corals right away? I don't have any coral yet, just fish. It seems, uh, seems to me like I can, but I wanted to get your expert opinion before starting to add corals to my coral quarantine tank. Uh, thank you so much in advance. Now, a couple of things on that. Uh, definitely not an expert, but um, uh, I do feel that I've quarantined enough corals to at least give you a, a general guide and some, uh, you know, uh, advice to move you in the right direction. But I do appreciate you saying that. And uh, yeah, so. I am going to put a link to the coral quarantine tank video, uh, setup video that's on my website. I'm going to put that in the description and the comment section so you guys can check that out. Uh, just in case you're looking to learn how to set up a coral quarantine coral quarantine tank, man, I'm going to tongue tie that for the rest of the video. <clears throat> Either way, when it comes to uh, setting up your coral quarantine tank, there's a, I'm just going to say quarantine tank at this point. Uh, there's a few things you need to take in consideration. Um, it, first thing is the setup. Is your tank going to be big enough for the amount of corals you want to quarantine? Um, do you have a good enough heater? Do you have some kind of power heads or mechanical filtration? Do you have a light that's adequate that's going to be equivalent or close to what you're going to get for par in your main display tank? Um, do you have uh, you know beneficial bacteria? Do you have media? Are you using cycled water? Um, you know other things you can consider are what kind of fish are going to be in there to help take care of parasites or pests. Um, quick fact, quick thing on that is uh, I usually do tangs or wrasses in my coral quarantine tanks. Always done that. And uh, yeah, do you have an ATO? Are you going to be able to supplement calcium and alkalinity? Again, these are going to depend on how big your quarantine tank is and how many corals you intend to quarantine at one time. So. <clears throat> with that said, uh, yes, you can take a piece of rock from your main display that's been up for about 11 months, and you can put that in your coral quarantine tank. Now, I wouldn't say that you should start uh, quarantine corals right away. I would at least give it um, a couple weeks or a week or so, a minimum, to um, kind of establish and to get uh, kind of uh, stabilized. So that means that your alkalinity is stable, your temperature is stable, or, and um, you're not getting major fluctuations in salinity or anything like that. And that way you can match these water parameters to your main display tank so it's easier to quarantine and then transition those corals to your main tank without fear of losing them uh, during the process. Now, another thing to consider is uh, when it comes to separating tanks from each other, and this is uh, with fish quarantine as well as coral quarantine, is you don't want to cross-contaminate any piece of equipment or even media between your main display and your coral quarantine tank or your fish quarantine tank. Now, it's a little bit more uh, severe if you're cross-contaminating with a fish quarantine when you're dealing with copper and that kind of stuff. Um, with coral quarantine, it's not as bad. I mean, worst case scenario, you might get a pest to come over to your main display. That is probably the worst. Uh, it can still be an issue depending on what kind of pest it is. You know, if it's an acroporeating flatworm, yeah, you're, you know, that's that's pretty bad. I'd probably take some copper uh, contamination over an acroporeating flat. Let me let me rephrase that. I would definitely rather have copper in my tank than acropora eating flatworms. To what extent, I don't know yet. But either way, you get the point. So when you take that rock from your main display and you put that in your core quarantine tank, make sure you don't put that rock 
back into your tank. Just keep the coral uh, quarantine up all the time. Uh, you can just turn the light off when you're not using it and just make sure it's topped off and it's stable and make sure there's a cover on it to help with evaporation. Either way, if you set one up and you plan on getting more corals in within the next few months or even the next you know eight months to a year, you could still keep that tank running. It, it Usually they're low maintenance. They don't require a lot of equipment and um, you know you can keep them up and going, keep that beneficial bacteria going in that rock. Now, um, as when, as for when it comes to like dealing with pests and stuff like that, I could do a separate video more in depth on particular pests and how to deal with them if you guys want. Just let me know in the comment section. Um, but generally speaking, you want to make sure that you have a, an ability to um, observe the corals, observe the plugs on top, underneath. Um, I talk about in my previous video on how to cut the frags off, put them on new frag plugs, that kind of stuff, dipping, all that to help eliminate some of these major pests like acropora eating flatworms but it, either way at the end of the day you want to be able to observe the corals um, top bottom all around and you want to be able to find these things that's the point of our quarantine tanks is you want to be able to find these pests and give them a chance to reproduce in a smaller secure enclosed environment that way they never make it to your main display where it's virtually impossible to get rid of them so with that said i don't want to drag this video out too long um, if you guys have any more questions feel free to email me I will be doing these every week, three or four or five of these every week um, in the hopes of catching up on emails. Um, you guys ask questions and it is, uh, you know, part of my responsibility uh, and to answer these questions i do feel bad for not not doing that so um again you can either come to one of our live q and a's every monday night eight or at 8 p.m eastern standard time or you can send your stuff in again via email and i can make a video specifically um either voiceover looking at the old new 300 uh, or uh, me in front of the camera either way so with that said guys again if you want to support the channel head over to fishofhex.com and i appreciate you all right peace